good morning students so welcome back to our class that is nothing but digital electronic class so this is our series of digital classes that is our online classes in that the topic for our discussion would be the five variable k map so till now what we have done we have discussed about the k maps based upon don't care conditions so we have done in the previous uh, class we have talked about nand gate nor gate how do we uh, write the particular basic gates in terms of nand gate if they gave in the question to resolve or realize the particular function by using only nand gate that particular functions we have done so now in today's class we are going to do the problem related to five variable k map so in that five variable k map first thing we should understand how to write the square boxes for each k, k map how do we write each particular square box that we will see and we'll draw the graph for it so let's continue with our discussion so in that we are seeing five variables so five variable means what how many values will take suppose a b c d and e so these number of variables so that means the combination would be how much the combination of all these variables would be 2 power 5 that means it's what 32 32 means the bits are ranging from 0 to 31 so that means we need to write its truth table these number of variables we need to write and we'll write its truth table so how do we write the truth table those number of combinations we have to write till 31 so we'll write this combinations Suppose you had first A, B, C, D, E. So somewhere I'm taking one more so that it will be easy for me to write the whole truth table. So A, B, C, D, and E. So what is this value? 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3, 2 power 4. That means 16. This is what? 8, 4, 2, 1. What is the first digit I, would, I will mention in that? I'll mention 0. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So likewise, I'll write the values. So 0 means all zeros. 1 means all 0, last would be 1. 2 means 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. 3 means 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. 4 means 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 5 means 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. 6, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. 7, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Likewise, 8, 0, 1, all zeros. So, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, 11 is 8 plus 2 plus 1 is 11. 12. So, 0, 1, 1. Tell me 8 plus 4 is 12, remaining is 0. 13. So, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So, likewise, 13, then 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So, and 30, 31, that's it. So, we'll write those numbers. So, it's what? 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. 14 is what? This is 14. 15, all 1s. 16, 1, all zeros. 17, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 18, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. 19, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. 20, if you do have 1, 16, plus 4 is 20. Remaining will be 0. Likewise, 31. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 8, 16 plus 8. 24 plus 4, 28. 30, 31. So, as you can see, in initial values, all first A value, if I had, till 15 it is 0. From 16 onwards, these all A values is nothing but in terms of 1, 1, 1. So I can separate, I can this segregate this A from this end, from this first A to this one. I can write for whole this value, I can write it as this is nothing but A complement, A bar. For remaining, I can write it as A. So this from here 0 to 15, the answer of that A is what A bar. Similarly, for 16 to 31, I can write that as nothing but A because it's one, right? So for that, what I'm doing, I'm taking two separate four variable k map. First one I'll take and I'll take second one. Like this, I'll take two four variable k maps. In that, what I'll take, I'll assume this A bar. For A bar, what I'm writing? B, C, D, E. Similarly here, B, C, D, E. But here, what I'm assuming? A is equals to 1. A bar is nothing but A is equals to 0. For all, this is there. So in that, what I'm taking? 1, 2, 3. 1, 2. This is my 3. Clear? So likewise, I can make... So 1, 2. 
so 1 2 3 4 so 1 2 3 and 4 clear so what i assume i have not taken a since it is five variable right we need to take five variables but we are not taking five a we are keeping constant only we are writing b c d e here also b c d e so in that b c d e b c d e have taken over there the combination would be exactly same so this is what 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 so 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 and 1 0 then writing the each value will be that particular one like m0 m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 m6 m7 m8 m9 m10 m11 m12 m13 m14 and m15 we stop till 115 because only that much is possible whereas from here we'll start from m16 m16 m17 m18 m19 then m20 m21 22 and 23 next m24 25 26 27 then 28 29 30 and 31 31 means 1 1 1 1 and a is also 1 so that means all 1 1 1 1 is covered so this is the way you can design when you had five variable came up in the question they gave the values like 0 16 19 20 25 30 31 like that if they gave the question how to solve it in order to solve that one we need to design separately like this the initial one four variables separately then next four variables separately so by drawing like this all bits is covered what actually our assumption for the first four variable a is equals to 0 because from 0 to 15 a is 0 from next from 16 to 31 a is what actually it's 1 so that common bit we are not considering we are taking that is separated by taking that separated value a is equal to 0 and a is equals to 1 we can design 5 variable k map and that also they'll give the questions as you have done for 4 variable right till now whatever the problem we have done it's all about the 4 variable if the question they gave in the exam to solve the question based upon the five variable in that they'll give the bits from 0 to 31 so that kind of question they'll ask you we will do the problems so see students so we are going for next uh, topic of our discussion would be quinn M mc klusky method that is one of the last topic of your unit one that is nothing but the tabular method in this first thing what is this method is all about so when we are discussing about k-maps, when we are discussing about Boolean functions, we have seen that whenever we had any function, whenever we had Boolean function, we try to minimize the function either by using some Boolean's law, De Morgan theorems, or by applying k-maps. So these are what actually these are used to eliminate the number of mean terms in the particular function. Our Next topic is tabular method that is also essential method that is very easy and very effective methods in order to minimize the given number of mean terms. So in this we are uh, taking a particular function in a specific order like that we will take a specific order and we'll try to eliminate the repeated term that is the redundant term and we will try to make into different segregations like we are, we are taking suppose you do have functions. If I'm having any function, like if, if I do have f is equals to summation m of some function 1, 3, 9, 12, like this. So in this, what I'll write first thing, I'll write for that particular function, I'll write its respective binary combination. So what is that? 1, I can write 0, 0, 0, 1. If I do have 3, how do I write 3? 0, 0, 1, 1. How do I write 7? 0, 1, 1, 1. How do I write 12? 1, 8 plus 4, that is 12. Like this, I can write. So here, what I'm doing, I am taking respective binary digit in this and try to make into a tabular form. That means first in order to solve the question based upon the Quinn MC Klusky method or in other way tabular method, we are having certain procedure to be followed in order to write that particular function for getting the minimum function as whatever the things we are doing like if you are doing the tabular method or else if you are doing the k-map method 
the main motive the main aim of our function the main aim of doing is that we want to reduce the given number of literals or a variables we try to minimize right whatever the questions we have seen in four variable two variable three variable all the things what we have done we have taken either two combination or four combination that is called quad or we have taken eight binary combinations and we'll try to minimize the function that way we have done right in came up whereas in first one like you have seen the boolean uh, laws if you have seen or de morgan's law we'll try to minimize by applying the laws same way this method is also applicable to reduce to minimize the number of binary variables or to minimize the literals so in order to do that one first thing what we are doing is find the prime implicant of the function what is the meaning of this prime implicant it is nothing but try to uh, segregate try to make the index value index how many number of zeros are there how many number of ones are there so that means we try to make one particular index value as you can see here in the one, in the one we had only single one that is called index one in this what is this this is what three and this is what 12 in this how many number of ones are there here is also two ones here is also two ones that means this is called index two that means how many number of ones we do have that number of ones we need to make into separate category so clear so what i'm what i'm going to tell you is that whatever number of ones we do have that should be make it as separate one particular table and how many number of ones are there that is also one specific table if you do have like this 1110011111110 or 1011 anything in this the number of digits whatever digits we are taking this suppose i do have how many see in this also three ones 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 that means it is called index 3 so what is this actually 1111 means 8 plus 4 plus 2 8 plus 4 is 12 12 plus 2 is 14 mean term 14 like this 7 mean term 7 this is 8 plus 4 12 12 plus 1 13 this is 8 plus 2 this is 11 so these are what actually in this all you can see in all the digits there are three ones that is called index 3 so irrespective of these numbers we try to combine their respective mean terms by considering the number of ones so that is called as prime implicant of that function so in that number of one should be one a particular thing number of uh, twice times if one is coming that should be separated number of thrice if it is coming one that should be separated we'll see when we'll do the problems you'll we'll, we'll understand in a better way next one construct the prime implicant table and find essential prime implicant that means we need to compare it index 1 with index 2 index 2 with index 3 index 3 with index 4 and we'll try to reduce the function that means if i'll compare this and this one you tell me this is 0 0 this is same 0 0 this is same this is 0 1 only this one digit is different that means if i comparing what is this 1 and 3 if i'm comparing 1 mean term 1 and 3 i'm getting 00 dash 1 what is this dash means it can be zero or it can be one this is don't care so that is called what what i'm what i'm doing i'm comparing this to this this whatever the answer i'm getting that is called essential prime implicant i want to find out the essential prime implicant of that function by comparing it with the one bit with the previous one that means index one with index two index two with index three i'll try to find out the essential prime implicant of that function and in the minimum minimal sum minimal sum in the sense whatever the bits i do have i'll try to minimize i'll try to reduce it so how do i reduce it i'll can compare one dash i'll get i can get compare to 0011 i'll get two dash that means as you can see here only i am taking two bits that means this again one i am making into two dashes that is also the second category the secondary comparison so how i'm doing it i just want to take the value that particular value i want to write that function so based upon that i am writing the minimum minimal sum for it so clear so for that next thing after all essential prime implicants are deleted after getting all the prime implicant deletions next thing write the prime implicant table so we need to write the table how do we write the table first will what i am doing i am making one table in that what i am writing first step i am writing index value index 0 index 1 index 2 index 3 what is index 0 means 
Index 0 means only 0 will come. Like if you do have 4 variable, it is 4 zeros. Index 1 means whatever, what are the values will come? Like you had 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, like this. You can see all are having 1, see 1 times. This is also having 1 time 1s. This is also having 1 time 1. This is also having 1 times 1. That means this is called index 1. Index is not like a minimum, minimal term 1, like min term 1. It's not like that. It is what? In the given digits, how many times 1 is coming? If it is coming 1 time, then it is called index 1. If it's coming 2 times 1, like this, 2 times 1, here is also 2 times 1. That means this is called index 2. Likewise, if you are getting 3 times 1, like this, 3 times 1 in 14, 3 times 1 in 7, 3 times 1 in 13, 3 times 1 in 11. That means this is called it as index 3. So that tabular way I am doing. That's the reason they are saying after all essential prime implicants are deleted from the prime implicants table, delete the dominant rows. Means we will see how we will delete while comparing 0 with 1, 1 with 2, 2 with 3. By comparing it, we will try to re reduce it. We try to delete it dominant row and dominant column in the table and find the secondary essential prime implicant. What is the meaning of secondary essential? Here you have compared one, right? If you are comparing two bits in that, that is called secondary prime implicant of that particular function. So find secondary prime implicant. After that, you keep on repeating this step three and step four until and unless there is no comparison possible. That means you may get like this. So one dash, one dash, zero dash, zero dash. You tell me what can I do comparison? Here one is there, here zero is there. I cannot do it comparing because it's not same. It's a different. 1, 0, here also 0. So what is that? It is also not possible to do the comparison. So there, we need to stop it. From where? Where we need to stop? The point, we reach it in the problem where the further comparison is not possible. So for that, time, till that time, we need to keep on doing the comparison. And write the minimum covered function of the particular given Boolean function. So these steps, we need to adopt it in order to find out the problem for given boolean function by using the tabular methods. So what are the steps we need to adopt? First thing is that first we will write to we need to write index value that is called prime implicant. After that second step is that we need to compare it index 0 with index 1, index 1 with index 2, index 2 with index 3. If you do have till 3. After that we need to write the essential prime implicant that is called this one. This way if you are doing that is called essential prime implicant. After getting the essential, we need to go for secondary essential prime implicant. We need to keep on repeating this thing until and unless there is no comparison possible. So this is the way we will do the problems related to the uh, kind of MC Klusky method or tabular method. So we will see the problems of this in detail before doing the problems. Note down the procedure for this and in the in this coming classes we will do more problems related to tabular method and we left with what actually five variables also we have to do one problem. That problem I will show you and NOR gate, NOR gate implementation. Given function completely we need to take NOR gate, we need to solve it. That thing also I will show you after uh, seeing this thing. So just make a note of it. I will give five seconds pause for this, you note on this thing. So, so students, we did this thing, find the prime implicates of the function we done. Second is what? Constructing the first prime implicant. After that, getting the essential prime implicant. Then include the essential prime implicant into minimal function. After that, deleting the dominant rows and dominant columns means repeated rows and columns we need to delete and we need to keep on repeating this step until and unless we will get the function which function minimum covered function which needs to be found so in the next class i am going to teach you the problems related to these uh, tabular method and as you know that problem related to nor implementation of the boolean function that we will see in the next class so thank you for today's class in the coming classes, we are going to just wind up our complete tabular methods. So thank you. Have a good day.